Hey, Q&A week. This week's questions from Eric Weller. It's a great question. It's very pertinent to what we're in a little bit. We got runoff going huge right now, but his question is, uh, with runoff right around the corner, which it's here, with runoff right around the corner, the river's getting high and muddy, a lot of people are going to quit fishing, but obviously the fish still eat. What method is best? What works best for you in these conditions? Nymphing, streamers, etc. It is a great question. It's one we're fielding almost daily right now because the rivers went up with all this warm temperature here in Montana really quick. And so, and, I, and I've done a lot of seminars on this, and I can't tell you how often I get these questions. So I'm going to go through some of the basics. First and foremost, understand that what makes fish feed is biomass. And when you have biomass, it's either a hatch or when you have high, dirty water, you're getting a lot of dislodgement. A lot of flies getting kicked off the rocks. And this is a time when the fish are very comfortable. That's a real key is that they're not, there's nothing to distract them. They can see in this water just fine. You can't see them. They can see the bugs just fine. They're eating like crazy. So I want to go through a couple, you know, wives' tales that people think they have to do when they're nymph fishing. So first and foremost, remember that the fish can see fine. So you don't have to do this giant, bright, gaudy fly. The fish are down there eating betas and midges just as well as they are anything else. So I'm going to show you a couple things. Uh, I would say during this time, the nymph fishing is probably the most uh, efficient, but streamer fishing is great. And on a side note, if you're at the right spot, even when right now you can't see it three inches in the water, you can still, fish will still eat dry flies. I wouldn't go waste a lot of time, but this afternoon, if there's, a, if there's betas on, they'll eat them. But most of the time, you're going to be nymph fishing. And so back to the biomass thing. Biomass just simply means there's a lot of stuff coming at the fish. Trout are tactile eaters, meaning that they touch things. They, they go over and they mouth anything that goes by, even in clear water, by the way. But in this water, their vision's, you know, I don't know how long it is, but I know they can see a foot or two for, real easily. And they'll go and they'll touch everything. So the ideal here is to find the water. It's not the fly as much as it is the type of water that the fish is looking for. So when you've got this really big big, high, roily water, regardless of where you are. It doesn't matter if you're on a smaller river, you're still going to have high push areas where the water's really ripping. What you want to do is you want to find a soft spot beside that water. So you want to have two seams meeting, right? You've got a fast water and then you, the fish doesn't want to fight that heavy flow. What he wants to do is be able to sit there and go in and out and get the bugs that are getting pushed down in that water, but he doesn't want to buck all the, the pressure of the water. So what we're going to look for is just like here, this is right behind the lodge. I got really, really big water, and you can see I've got this perfect break. It's just perfect, so the fish can sit there. It's not. I don't like water that goes upstream. Don't look for a big circulator that's going the wrong direction. You want to both go in this in the same direction, but one slower than the other one. And then you just position your flies in that seam where the fish are sitting to get all the dislodged bugs that are going by. So first thing you look for, above everything else, because, you know, the other day I was opener here in Montana, and every person that walked in the shop said, man, the only thing they're eating is this. Well, after about the tenth person comes in and tells you the only thing they're eating is this, but it's ten different flies, it makes you realize they're eating a lot of flies. It's where the fly is. So we're going to look for these seams, look for the fast, fast water next to a slow break. We're going to position our flies right in there. Now I'm going to show you how I do mine, especially in the spring. For those of you that have heard my that heard my uh, ask about fly fish thing with Roger Mavis, I talked about doing drop shotting. All right, so here's going to be my system. Down here will be my split shot, the very bottom, right, six inches below the fly. I've got a stone fly nymph, and up here I got an 18 hair zoo. I will catch as many fish on that hair zoo as I will this stone fly. Another giant wives tail. You gotta have a big gaudy fly in dirty water. Absolutely couldn't be further from the truth. I'm gonna put this on. I got a lot of stone flies around right now. I'm just matching the hatch. I also got a ton of baits. So what I've got here is I got a drop shot system. Out of the eye of the bottom hook, six inches, I'll have my split shot. About 16 inches above it, I got a dropper loop, four inches long, and I'll have my baits. 
The reason I do it in that sequence, stonefly is going to be lower. If there's any bugs moving through the water, I'm going to have that one above it. But in reality, it's going to run about like that angle, okay? And then we're just going to set up tight on the runs. We're not going to cast long distances. We're going to set up tight to the seam, and we're going to fish that. We'll do that in a second. So, let me grab my streamer. On the streamers. Streamers are equally as effective right now. I'm trying to move around here because I'm getting my feet wet. Streamers are equally, not equally, but very close to as effective. But just like with the nymph where I said I was going to set up close, same thing with the streamer. I use, and it doesn't really matter, I like to fish upstream in high water. And here's the reason. We've got all this water ripping through here. You see people, because you know, traditionally we throw across stream. Well, that water's going to push my fly out of that stream so fast, there's no way I can fish it. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to fish upstream. I'm going to use a relatively short line. I'm going to fish upstream, and I'm going to do what I call snake walking. I'm just going to walk the fly down, kind of make it look like a snake coming in and out of stuff. Really short retrieves. We'll show you, we, we're going to have to move out of this spot, but John will pan in, you'll see what we're talking about. But it's a slower retrieve, it's kind of coming back at you, because the fish are banked up. And that's the other thing about spring fishing. They're going to move to the softest water, which lots of times is really close to shore. So we're not going to throw out in the middle and try to rip it back, because there's nothing out there anyway. We've all moved into the water that's more comfortable for them. And I'm going to move back here, I'm going to fish this seam real quick with a nymph. Then we'll go downstream and we'll fish the streamer. It looks like we're on it. We're going to on the bottom. stream a little bit because it's so loud up there mostly because I kept getting my feet wet. I don't like my feet wet. But we're going to do the same thing right here. I've just got a really small seam. It's fast water meeting slow water. I'm right on top of the fish. I'm right here. Still have a stone fly and a betis on. And hopefully I fall in right here because the rock's moving. And all I'm going to do is fish real tight on these seams. Right so the last two upstream, the last two upstream both ate the betas, and that was to the point we were making. Is that is that uh, that one had the betas as well? So we've got a size 18 betas above a stonefly. We've had three fish in about five minutes, and every one of them has eaten the smaller fly. And as you can see, I've got zero visibility here. There's no it's, it's, they can see just fine. I'm right on top of the fish. Oh, just missed one. I'm right on top of them. But that's, this is what makes fishing now so easy and so fun because you catch so many more fish. And again, the point is to find the type of water. It's not the fly so much. It's the type of water. Find soft water next to fast water. But both seams are going in the same direction. Man, I keep missing them right I'm right under myself here when I'm getting this fish. And it's the type of water, find the seams are going the same direction. Try not to fish the ones that are going too much upstream. And then fish really tight. I'm going to switch over now. I'm just going to, we are talking about the streamer fishing and how we do that in this water. This, this particular spot's not as bad because it's pretty soft all the way through. But like where we were, the water's so fast in high water and, and dirty water is that the, you know, it pushes the fish into the edge. And so if you're throwing out in the middle, you're basically just wasting time. So I'm going to move, I'm going to drop this, as tempting as it is to keep fishing. One more cast, okay, one more cast, one more cast, let it go through there. 
Uh, I'm gonna move down here and have Johnny get above me. And I'm just gonna hit the fly down in the water so you can see what we call snake walking. Because most of the time when we're streamer fishing in high water, we're fishing upstream because we don't want to fish out in that fish out in that really big water. So we're fishing upstream. The fish will bank out. They'll be really close to shore, and then we'll just we're gonna walk you really short strips and move the fly. The key to this for me is that I'm gonna run these things really short retrieves, generally less than five feet, throwing upstream. I'm gonna have control over the fly. I'm gonna swim it down a little ways, gonna pick it up and do it again. I'm just gonna keep moving, looking for players. But I'm not gonna spend a lot of time making long casts and trying to retrieve. You see, I'm doing it just with my tip, hunting the fly along the rocks or the bank, whatever it is, and then move on. So in summary, essentially in high dirty water, what you're looking for is the type of water first. Look for slow water next to fast water that you think would hold, you know, multiple fish. Don't worry about the fly. You know, don't, I mean about the size of the fly. You do not have to have a giant, bright, gaudy fly. We caught three, we hooked three fish in about five minutes. Every one of them was on a size 18 betas and I had a stone fly below it. If you're gonna be streamer fishing, what I like to do, I call it snake walking because it looks like a snake coming downstream hunting. Fish short sections, fish like a five to eight foot retrieve, keep control of your fly, and just keep it coming downstream. Again though, look for the water. It's critical water. It's not the, the fly so much, it's where the fish are gonna be to get out of this giant cushy water. They're gonna be inside looking for something that they can feed on and a break from the big water. So, everything the same regardless of where you fish. I don't really care if it's Michigan, Montana, Alaska, high dirty water, it's the same everywhere. They just look for breaks. Remember that you're gonna find the biggest fish in the water they have to fight the least resistance, but still has a lot of bugs coming their way. Remember, if you send us in your Q&A question, if we use it, we send you a box of flies and a hat. Keep them coming, it's been really good. Thanks, hope that helped you out.